Hey everybody, welcome to LinuxCast. I'm your host, Matt. And I'm Tyler. And I'm Steve. Yes. We actually got it in the right order the first time, which is good. So welcome to the Linux Cast. Uh, I'm going to be banning one of my moderators here pretty soon because uh, <laughs> he won't stop trolling me. Uh, it's okay. I love you, Dad. You're awesome. Just stop with the nuggies, man. Stop with the nuggies. Uh, so it's just one of those words. It's like moist. <laughs> Anyways, welcome to the Linux Cast. This is going to be one of those episodes where Matt doesn't know what the hell he's doing. So in other words, situation normal, off. You, you get it, the idea. Anyways, uh, we talk about Linuxy things on this podcast. We don't do it in a professional manner. So if you are tuning into the podcast expect, expecting professionalism, you should go find another podcast to listen to. I'm just saying. I mean, we try to stay away from the adult stuff. We've toned down some of that, but we're, we're still going to be us. That's the way it's going to be. Much to my dismay. Much to my dismay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he wanted the adult stuff to stay. I'm sorry. It's YouTube, man. Come on. I want to make at least $3 from the podcast. Otherwise, I can't okay. do it if we get demonetized. What? How else am I going to – I am gonna. I need that $3, man. All right, anyways. Uh, you can tell that I'm very, very wordy today, and I have no clue what we're talking about. Oh, wait a minute. Apps. But anyways. <laughs> <laughs> Before we jump into our essential apps for 2023, what we're going to be doing today, as we always do, is start off the podcast with talking about what we've done this week in open source. So, Tyler, you go first, my friend. Oh, <clears throat> well, I have started making content again. That's something that's happened. <gasps> so, I know. I know. Really? Trust content? me. I know. You're like a whole bunch of videos on this. He posted more videos this week than I did. And they were real, down to earth. How the hell? Wow! Mind blown. <laughs> so yeah, that's what I've been doing. I've been making content. Um, I'm also I've been messing around a little bit with my Waybar configuration uh, today. So uh, maybe that'll be pushed up here before too long. I just made the background more transparent and changed around some of the workspace icons. That's pretty much all I've done to it. Um, I've also made it, I think, a little bit thinner. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty much all I've been messing around with. Still doing my normal Hyperland uh, stuff. I need to finish up my website, but I've been slacking on that big time. Uh, so if you go to my website, there's like rendering issues and stuff. Just know, I know that's there. I'm fixing up the CSS. But, uh, yeah, uh, I'm also trying to get you know my podcast the linux nuggies the new channel uh, up and off the ground so uh if you want to go check that out you can matt hates it uh the name that is and it's perfect it's beautiful so uh if you want to support something that you know will slightly irk matt please come on and do it so yeah uh that's pretty much what i've been up to oh I'm definitely creating a, a t-shirt for my store calling I Hate Nuggies. <laughs> That's definitely going to happen. <laughs> I'm going to... I, I, I'm, I'm going to see. I don't know if we might have legal trouble between us around this, but what I'm thinking about is getting a shirt design made where we market the new channel uh, and say sponsored by and then have like your face be the biggest item on the t-shirt <laughs> i think um, that's one that we might do i think that's a design that people will really enjoy and love my brand is very <laughs> expensive <laughs> you can't afford it <laughs> don't worry I, I i think we'll be able to work with your manager and get some you know beautiful beautiful like you know, the thing is he, already ha like, he already has an image of me somewhere because it used to be on his store so he just i'm just using it i'll risk the lawyers man <laughs> all right steve what you been up to this week well before i start with what i was uh, up to i need to uh thank if you show some love to a couple of guys that i recently met on the linux gaming fr server on discord i need to uh, i need to say a big thank you to cardiac salut cardiac merci beaucoup pour tout ce que tu fais et continue and air max Air Max uh, has a channel on YouTube. He live streams Diablo these days. Uh, he's an awesome dude. Uh, he speaks English. He's currently, I think, in Canada. But uh, he's a French dude. Salut, Air Max. Et merci pour tout. Pour ce que tu fais. Et continue. Uh, with that being said, what I have been up to? Well, I've been up to here with 
uh, zero Linux because I need to uh, recently, if you don't, if you haven't been watching the news, there's a war going on in Lebanon in the south right now. It's not very big. It's not very humongous. It hasn't reached us, but there's trouble boiling in in my town in my country. So I needed to sink myself into my work. So I was working a lot on zero Linux. There's a new script that I just finished thanks to VLK. He's a Bash genius. Uh, I just used basic Bash language to write it, and then I sent it over to him. He turned it in like he's a machine. He's a human machine that turns basic Bash language into professional Bash language. He cleaned it up. He made it look good, and the commands are shortened from this long to this long. So the script I'm talking about uh, is an NVIDIA driver installer that makes it work with Wayland on zero Linux. Yeah, I'm I'm casting spells. Yeah, Kudu. <laughs> I'm casting <laughs> spells. Because it's French. But anyway, uh the scripts the script now installs not only installs the uh the NVIDIA drivers, but it makes sure that the proper Wayland stuff is done to the system for GNOME and uh, KDE. So now with the next starting next release, Zero Linux will work with uh NVIDIA and Wayland. Beyond that, what happens beyond that is not my problem. I made sure it works out of the box once you install your NVIDIA drivers. If you have hybrid graphics, not on me. But uh, other than that, I spent uh, a lot of time uh, uh, killing Latte Doc. Latte Doc is gone, replaced by the KDE panel. And guess what, guys? KDE with the KDE add ons, the plasma add ons, is bringing back the Compiz Q. That that makes me excited because I love that cube. And what else was I doing? Oh yeah, with the GTK recent GTK four update, they broke GTK theming again. So somebody created a patch on the AUR in case you want to use it. Thanks, Eric, from Arco. So there's a patch called Libadvita without Advita. You install that on XFCE specifically. All you want to know what? Hold on a second. I'm sorry, Steve. I, I don't mean to interrupt, but Nate, you can take your five dollars and just shove it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, swear, for life. I swear to God. <laughs> also, he had a he had a wonderful comment earlier. T- Tyler, you should call all of your subscribers nuggies and number them because apparently I'm now <laughs> nuggy number two. I hated that so much. I, I'm sorry, Steve. You can finish that. I apologize for it, but I just had to. No, it's okay. <laughs> I cut you off all the time, so it's. All... But uh, the final thing, I, the final thing I did was uh, update uh, GNOME and all the extensions, building them from source. Not from the extensions website because on the extensions website they haven't been updated yet to work with GNOME 45. So uh, yeah, uh, so the extensions work with all the extensions I had before work on GNOME 45, and that's uh, what I've been up to. I need to find something else to to sink myself into, or else I'm gonna go shit my pants due to the war. Is it gonna happen? Is it not gonna happen? <laughs> well, we hope it doesn't happen, Steve. We want you to be safe. Yeah. Um. All right. Yeah. So. I've been fighting with everybody, man. I've been so feisty this week. It's been really, really bad. Oh, my God, George. <laughs> I swear to God. Yes, people. I, I swear to God. <laughs> For, matter, you know, I'm actually going to make a rule from now on. If you want to say the word nuggies, you have to give me $5. <laughs> That's the rule. <laughs> That's great. Help, help out the channel and piss them off at the same time. How could you possibly do better? Anybody else going to get mad when they get a super chat? Uh, how dare you send me a super chat? Take it back. I don't want to hear that word anymore. No, I'm just going to be. I'm going to end me in the corner. Just no nuggies, 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 nuggies. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> oh god the, the podcast has gone off the rails I, and it's all your guys' fault <laughs> i'm not recommending this at all at all but i think it would be funny if your patrons switch their user profile names to be nuggies with a random number behind it <laughs> that would be hilarious now don't do that unless you're cool <laughs> oh god all right uh so i've been i've been very feisty this week i pissed off the flat pack developers which is i'm I mean, quite a task because i just did i also pissed off the qtile developers uh and who else oh i i made Nicolo angry at me so 
<laughs> wait, 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 Matt. Hey, Josh, what have you done with Matt? Yeah, yeah, I'm getting banned by everybody. <laughs> Steve. <laughs> God damn it, Nate. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting trolled in my own chat. If you guys are listening to the audio podcast, I'm sorry, man, but the chat is just that they're sending me lots of money. It's great, but they're all just pissing me off because I keep using the word nuggies. <laughs> uh, I can't stand that word. It just makes me grind my teeth. Uh, anyways, <laughs> this is the worst trolling of Matt ever. Congratulations, guys! I'm quitting. I'm just. I'm just gonna. There's I'm a new gonna one. There's go. a new one. There's a new one in chat. Uh, there's a new super chat. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Steve, for your two dollars. I'm also banning you from the podcast. Get off my podcast. Super Both Nuxta you. Gangsta. <laughs> uh, uh, any, anyways, I made a lot of developers mad at me this week. Uh, I apologize for that. I, I didn't mean to make anybody mad, but. I just had some interesting. Time. What did you do? What did you do? What did you do? What did you tell them? What do you you yeah, have what did to you tell say us about what you told pack? them? What did you? Uh, I I made a video. Okay, so let me. The, the flat pack wasn't was the worst one. So I made a video about flat pack, saying that I was no longer going to use flat pack because it stopped being good on my machine. All I did was tell exactly in that video what's happening for me. First off, they take up a lot of space. I had almost fifty gigabytes of flat packs on my machine. Had a lot of flat pack, sure, but it was 50 gigabytes. And uh, <laughs> it's still coming. Uh, I, I, I will get to the super chats here in a minute and, and thank you and also curse you at the same time. Uh, but anyways, um, so what I, I in the video, I said because it was taking up some space and I'm running out of room on my main hard drive and I don't want to have to reinstall OpenSUSE because I'm on a challenge for like the, literally the next two years. I, I need to get rid of Who Flatpaks cares if they're occupying more space if it, if they're more stable? Come on, man! Steve, let me finish. <laughs> uh, anyways, they were taking up a lot of space, which I mean, alone wasn't enough to get me switched, but they're also, for whatever reason, on OpenSUSE, they're really, really slow. Now, I've been told this is probably an OpenSUSE problem. OpenSUSE has some really weird things with Polkit going on. Always has, always will. They're never going to fix it. So, I just explained why I personally wasn't going to use flat packs. The flat pack devs took that as an offense because I wasn't going to use flat packs, and I just said I was. I in that video, I never told anybody to else to not use flat packs, and I never told anybody else that they should go use DistroBox. I just said I was going to go use DistroBox instead of flat packs because it was going to take up less space. You I, yeah, you didn't pull a DT like DT did with this video about the, the what's it called the the system tray system tray. Yeah. Um, well, well uh, I mean, just for example, I had that 50 gigabytes of flat packs. I installed every single application I had as a flat pack inside of one Arch distro box. And it took up, it went from 50 gigabytes to three gigabytes. The whole, and, and that includes the Arch system itself, like all the packages, like everything. Now it doesn't include, no, I, I will put a provisor out there that it doesn't include the personal data. So I'm assuming that in my home directory somewhere there's like a, um, Vivaldi takes up a lot of fucking space with a whole bunch of stuff that it stores. So I'm assuming that that extra space is it ain't, may end up eventually being exactly the same size once all the personal data is recollected and put it in the right spot. So maybe I didn't save anything. Maybe I just pissed off people for no reason. I don't know. All I know is it was my experience, and that's why I just made a video that was my experience, and it really made them mad. And you did you did make it clear that it was your experience. It's not to be generalized. Yeah, it was just it was just my experience, and the the flat pack dev said I was, you know, spreading misinformation. Like, okay, like it's fine. I, I just different people, I, different experiences. I have a person on my server who has issues with flat packs as well. The du du the duplication, like uh, Jorge did uh, said, the duplication of uh, packages like the Nvidia drivers. If you don't de uh, if you don't do remove unused, you might end up with like twelve versions of the Nvidia driver. They haven't fixed that yet, correctly at least. Well, uh, like I had like four different versions of Mesa. Yeah, um, so like, duplication—that's a serious issue. I, mean, I think it's just the way that it works, and it's fine. It's just, and, and for some things, like I'm still using the flat pack version of OBS right now, of just course. because I had of already course. had all the scenes and stuff set up and I'm too lazy to move it over to the OpenSUSE thing. Also, I love OpenSUSE a lot. It's my favorite distro of all time, but they have some 
pretty Everything. interesting package problems every once in a while that come through. Everything but, has its uh, share of problems. Everything. Well, I mean, it's a rolling release, so it basically has Arch Linux's problems sometimes. You know, every once yeah, in a while, yeah, I, some, uh, I have OpenSUSE and... tumbleweed, uh, tumbleweed distro uh, Docker image. And every day when I update it, it's got like 700. Uh, oh, I know. I mean, it, uh, it's 700 it's packages for update. <laughs> you can have se- it's like probably 300 a day, 400 a day. It's nuts. Yeah. Um, it's crazy. It's it's like, I thought, am I looking at Gentoo or NextOS here? Well, it's no, to, it's Tumbleweed. <laughs> it, it would be okay if, the, if Zipper had parallel downloads, but it doesn't. Oh, it doesn't. No, no it, do- it it's doesn't. It's slow AF. They've been working on parallel downloads since 2016. Now, there is a, a somebody in the community that's working on a rewrite of Zipper that's pretty close, apparently. And that looks like it's going to be really good. But it's not here yet. Yay yeah. to the community. All right, yeah. And let's, all right, so today, uh, our original plan was to talk about NixOS and stuff. But that's Josh's topic, and we insist that Josh actually be here for his topic. That's just kind of the rules. If you choose a topic, you gotta be, you gotta be here. You gotta show up to actually talk about it. So, what we're gonna do instead is something that we've done before. We have talked about our essential applications before, but we try to do it like once a year. Granted, there is a lot of overlap because you know GIMP doesn't actually change all that much. But we can do it once a year. We're gonna we're gonna talk about our essential Linux applications, and uh, we're gonna kind of take turns doing this, and we'll see if we how long we go. Uh, you, we, we may or may not get to everything that's on your guys' list. I don't know. Uh, we'll we'll go until we get tired of it, or until I decided I'm sick of people trolling me in my chat, whichever happens first. Anyway, so uh, <laughs> Tyler, your first essential app. Mine, uh, <clears throat> a controversial one, but uh, I I don't want to be without it anymore. Uh, Hyperland, it's the window manager I I enjoy using. Yeah, uh, I I think it's probably the best window manager. Only because if you want a feature, you don't have to break break your back or do anything special to implement the feature. It, I mean, it can almost guaranteed already be in like Hyperland's base feature set. Uh, and on the off chance it's not, someone has probably already made a plugin for it that you can just easily put in and implement uh, without having to work yourself. And then there's also the fact that most of the default, uh, w- the default config, the way it's set up is probably how most people want to use a window manager. Like if you haven't already been using a window manager and you've gotten used to the master stack layout, the dwindle layout is probably the best. <laughs> Steve. <laughs> Jesus Christ, man. <laughs> uh, yes, I heard my name. Is it my turn? <laughs> I'm going to guess you don't like Hyperland. <laughs> He's talking, no, he doesn't like window managers, man. He's uh, anti-window Hyper- manager. Hyperland, Hyperland is great. It's a win- to, to, It's a shame it's a window manager. <laughs> well, if you don't want someone else choosing everything that you're going to be running in your desktop setup, it's probably the best choice. Now, that being said, not everyone's going to have a great time with Hyperland, especially if you're an NVIDIA user. So, Or if you like your monitors to go to sleep. Uh, yeah, that's another thing. Uh, I will say one thing. I don't know why, but sleep functionality and everything is working without any work on my laptop. I don't know... If I've it's done something it's weird, sing- because it's no, because it's a single screen. When you have multiple screens, it hasn't. Oh, okay, okay. Well, I saw yeah. someone say it on the French server who was using Hyperland, so I'm just repeating. Oh. Oh, okay, well then that would be why. But uh, I, to me, that whole issue, I, I I would see it being annoying, but since it works on my laptop without any issues, it's fine. And on the desktop, I'm one of those people that if I get up and walk away from the computer and it's still on, I'm probably going to be back within 20 to 30 minutes anyway. So there's no real reason for the screens to cut off. And then at night, I just turn the computer off. Wait until Uh, you start having (laughs) burn-in. Well, luckily for me, I don't have OLED screens, so it's not really a problem. See, my computer's on around the clock. And because it serves as a file server and it does all the backups and stuff for all the computers in my house overnight and it will uploads stuff to the to the cloud overnight and stuff, right? So I leave my computer on overnight and I don't want the monitors to be on all night. I really, I mean, I could, I could, I can shut them off, but I prefer them to go off on them, their own 
and I don't, I'm, sometimes here's, I go to... here's, the, here's the flaw with that ideology. I've Because I have three monitors, and I used to, when we had power, uh, I used to leave my computers on 24-7. The problem with this, uh, with this thought is that you never know when something will shake and the mouse will move and it will wake up the monitors and it will be flash in your room and wake you the hell up. I live it in happened multiple Michigan. times. In my case. We don't have earthquakes. In my case. I'm not saying earthquakes, just a little thingy of a jig or a, a car pass by that caused the shakiness, whatever, because it flashed multiple times. I was like, ah, shut him off. Well, it, I mean, it, it works fine for me in Open Sousa on Qtile. So it should work fine in, in Hyperland, but it just doesn't. Uh, anyways, but otherwise, I'm at the point now, even though I just made a video like three weeks ago talking about how I was going to you know never leave Xorg behind. If Hyperland had the ability to have the monitors to shut off on my machine, I know it has the ability with Sway Idle. Don't at me about it. I know. And on KDE. Uh, actually, KDE has been working fine. Uh, in the latest uh, what was 5.27. Whatever works fine. Eight. Don't don't even have to kill K screen too. Just works. No, because K screen is deprecated uh, now. K win. I know. Are, now well. they fix it. <laughs> it's, it's hilarious. Like, <laughs> they heard now, you. Now they, they heard they you. It. Uh, it's it's hilarious. All right, uh, Steve, your first app. My uh, my first app. It's uh, Burt Manager. It's essential. Life cannot be complete without it. And no, don't come at me saying VBox is better or GNOME boxes. Uh, GNOME boxes, as far as I know, uses QMU in the back end. So it's the same thing, just stripped down. So no, don't come at me with all that. There is VMware for those who have a license, wherever they got it from. But KVM, QMU, Verb Manager, whatever you want to call it, is essential. I got 12 virtual machines in there. I have all three versions of Zero Linux in there. It keeps me, uh, it keep, uh, I can monitor all three, every update, to see what breaks. And if something breaks, I know what, how to fix, what to fix, blah, blah, blah. And now I have NixOS for some reason on there. Oh, yeah, because it's Josh thing. But yeah, it, uh, it, it's an essential tool for me. There's no life without it. I'm going to say this at the end, in the end. I'm gonna say use whichever virtual machine, virtual machine thing uh, software you want. For me, it's Vert Manager because it's quick. And I even and oh, I forgot to mention this. I am Windows Virgin now. I am Windows free now. I don't have Windows in dual boot no more. Like I don't think he knows what Virgin means. <laughs> 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 okay, wrong word. <laughs> you get the idea. Yes. <laughs> oh, the <laughs> I am. Uh, I am. Uh, whatever. Uh, so I am. I am, I am Windows Virgin. Yeah, I'm just crying over here, like man. That's not what I. I don't think that word means what you think it means. <laughs> no, Sorry, i do uh, i do like uh, it because it because that was kind of like you know like the school hoe coming out and being like <laughs> i'm a virgin now i stopped <laughs> sleeping around uh, i'm a 43 year old virgin uh, <laughs> oh that that movie is awesome by the way oh that fucker the 40 year old virgin yeah that's a good movie well uh, kelly clarkson <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> well, I mean, so he does know what the word means. It just was not the right word used there. Yeah, it, it came to my mind. I don't know why I say oh, ADHD. It's, whatever. It's, it's so, someone was... in chat. So, so, someone in chat said Windows celibate. I like that. That's probably the <laughs> yeah, best Windows way. Windows celibate. <laughs> yeah. So I'm Windows free now, and because I'm Windows free, where did Windows end up in? Vert Manager. So you're not actually. And so you're, it's even worse. You're not even actually. Windows. I'm Windows free on my main system as a main bootable <laughs> okay. system. I have uh, I have it, in, but I, I don't. I, I, I cried so much from it laughing. And... My glasses are foggy. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Steve. Glad so you I said, can make you laugh, dude. <laughs> you said you had moved Windows over to Vert Manager now. Before yeah. that, you had it just installed on a regular like drive in your computer. All my virtual machines are on a separate drive. So, well, no, 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 no. I mean, like when you were dual booting, so you just had it on a drive in your computer. Yeah, it was on my internal NVMe, and Zero Linux was on a SATA on on this one specifically, the Kingston. Uh, okay. It was on this, which I shove and I, ex sorry, uh, I insert and I pull up. Uh, uh, <laughs> 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 
I don't know which expression to use. So I put in and I put out. <laughs> I, 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 so, and I remove. <laughs> this podcast I remove. is the best ever. <laughs> the I, only I, reason I, so, I ask... So, sorry, Matt. The only reason I ask about your your setup beforehand with the dual boot is because I tried installing Windows on a separate drive so I could play Dead Side uh, on Windows. Now I completely unplugged my SATA SSD that oh, had oh, oh. my Linux I will stop installed. You right there. I know what happened. Yes, it right removed there. it. It removed the bootloader. Yeah, it, Ow. Windows does that. It has to have a certain. You have to install the things in a certain order in order for things. Yes. One thing has to control the bootloader, <laughs> otherwise it just goes away. Um, and 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 uh, and, and a lot of times, uh, what w Windows will do is, if you have more than one drive in the, in the system, it, it will install the bootloader on one drive and uh, and Windows on another drive. Yeah. Well, but the th the thing that blew my mind about it is I had completely removed my Linux drive, and when I plugged it back in and booted it up the next time, no no bootloader. I was like, what right. the hell? You lost Grub? You, you, yeah, you're lost, you grub. lost Grub. Yeah. You were getting the Grub res uh, rescue screen? No. Like, the drive... So, th this is the weirdest thing I've ever had happen. When I plugged it back in and booted it up, the drive was not detected at all by my BIOS or system like Windows system when it booted, oh, I could yeah. not find the, the drive. The partition was completely gone. Completely nuked, um, yeah. and so I had to reboot the system into an Arch Linux ISO, and then the drive was there, and I could I could do everything with it. <laughs> yeah, sorry. You, so you Arch Sharuted. Yeah. So uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. the chat is just winning it today, man. <laughs> complete yeah. win. Uh, Nate, I'm sorry. Thank you for the super chat, but I'm not reading your super chat. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't want to get demonetized, uh, but thank you but, for the. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, <laughs> God damn. so I'm, I'm Windows. I'm Windows free on my uh, on my uh, main system. It's I moved it to a, a virtual machine, uh, and I was surprised. I followed a guide by someone online uh, because there are certain things one has to do to Vert Manager to make Windows behave correctly. Or, or even the... functional. If if you just if you just stock Vert Manager install Windows, it is no. literally the slowest piece of garbage you've ever seen in your life. It doesn't matter exactly. how you, you could you could give it sixty gigabytes of memory and it would still be the slowest ever. Also, Vert Manager only allows you to set the virtual VRAM to a certain point. Past that, it just won't even load. Yeah, so. and you have to set everything to Vert IO. Yeah, everything should be for I/O, and you have to start your uh, display. You have to switch it to uh, to be a for I/O with a server, uh, mm -hmm. and connect it to your GPU so it can. Uh, when you install the uh, the guest editions, whatever they called for, vert editions, it will detect it correctly, detect it, and everything will be okay. And it's really snappy for a virtual machine. Do you? Yeah. Are you also piping in a graphics card for Windows? To oh use? no, no, no! I'm not doing pass through. Okay. I'm not okay. doing pass through. Okay. It's just uh, if you set it correctly in Vert Manager in the settings, uh, it will virtualize your GPU, but not uh, as a hardware acceleration, but the memory from your GPU. It can use it to, to its advantage, and it's more snappy that way. So gotcha. uh, thanks to this guide and finishing off anybody who's on Linux should use Vert Manager. Do not, although they have a, ver a version for Windows, it's going to be, uh, I'm going to say, good luck. No. Good luck. Actually, someone mentioned this in chat, and uh, just as a quick sidebar on your Vert Manager recommendation, um, someone mentioned Windows will be a cloud service soon, Space Wolf in chat. Um, yes, it will. I be have Windows a feeling cloud. that they are going to do that, and I don't know if... If Windows becomes a cloud service, virtualizing it will pretty much, like I, I fully believe Windows will make that, yeah, like Windows will make that move so people don't like really virtualize just, it. yeah, like but that way you're cost, either running it or you're not. But there will be there will be people who figure out ways how to well, get the images. Uh, even if it's line. even if it's a cloud service, there's still gonna be something on the machine locally. There has. To oh be. yeah, definitely. I mean, definitely, but uh, uh, it's gonna be very costly. I heard I, I heard rumors of the prices. Oh my god. Well, 
$200 is what it currently is for a pro license, which can, can, can imagine just, paying that on a monthly. Well, n not, not even just that. Like, let's say they drop the price. That doesn't matter. A lot of the arguments against windows, the best ones that I've heard, especially even if you're just going to be using it in a business sense, you pay for a license where they, they literally offs for what most companies would be using offsetting costs. They also market, they install yeah. applications for you and they collect all of your data and sell it. Like, I don't understand how you can sell a product for $200 and do all of that. And your customer base just keeps paying you. That's, that's nuts. <laughs> they want convenience. People will pay for convenience. And uh, as you said, offloading, having the hardware locally, this is offloading costs for uh, hardware right. costs. I'm going to, I'm going to say so. one thing it's, be and then we got, we have to move on to the, the actual f topic, but the reason why people keep paying it and keep using windows is because most people don't consider there to be any other choices other than like Mac OS. And that's not a choice for most people, but we got we, literally, this is not the topic. Oh. <laughs> yeah. You use windows as your, your app of the, of the, the Linux. Week. <laughs> Thank you, Steve. Uh, <laughs> uh, anyways, uh, my first one, I don't think it's going to be much of a surprise to anybody is DistroBox because it's fucking awesome. It's just so good guys. Every, there's not a day that goes by that I don't find something out about DistroBox that just blows my mind. So the other, other day I was looking for a way to install a terminal file manager that wasn't available on OpenSUSE. I wanted to you try to make it through Arch. Why don't you tell the story, Steve? <laughs> I, 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 I mean, obviously, you know the story. Go ahead and tell it. You told me not to not to interrupt you. When you tell me not to do something, I'll do it. I will mute you. It's, it's just like to think of a pink elephant. Don't think of a pink elephant thing. His brain can't. <laughs> uh, uh, anyways, uh, now I don't even remember what the hell I was talking about. Oh, anyway, uh, uh, so the, there was a terminal file manager I need to install. I didn't install it through Arch. Thank you, Steve. But because it's not, it doesn't have a desktop file. So the the regular dash desktop box dash export doesn't work. But instead, what you can use, you can use that with a point and point it directly to the binary of the thing that you downloaded, and then export that. And that's freaking awesome as well. So now I have that file manager installed on my OpenSUSE uh, install, and I can just use it just like I normally would in a in a terminal. So. Uh, what distro am I on this week? I'm on OpenSUSE. I'm always on OpenSUSE. Haven't changed in a while. I'm well over a hundred days. Uh, but anyways, the um, distro box, it's awesome. Uh, now I, I I get a lot of pushback from people who have never used distro box or don't see a real purpose in it. To me, the reason why distro box is awesome, and I'll just explain this quick. I've made videos about this, is that you can use whatever distro you want. It doesn't matter if it's immutable or just a regular Joe Smo Linux distro. Uh, you can choose whatever you want. It doesn't matter. Like, let's just say you're a real big fan of Solus. Solus's biggest problem has always been it has really small repositories, like really, really small. You know, and, and their implementation of their third-party repository is notoriously slow because they build everything from source. You can solve that. Use your use your Solus distro. Install DistroBox. You can install applications from any applica any distro on Solus using that and it just works. It's so good. And it's not just limited to apps. You can do desktop environments and window managers too, usually as long as they don't have some weird debus or system D requirements. Then you gotta you know start what? tweaking stuff. You made me think of this. I don't I've I've never thought about this, but what about using DistroBox with Gentoo? Because wouldn't you and sorry for cutting you off if you were still talking, but could, wouldn't you be able to like do like get around a lot of the compiling at BS that you'd have to using yeah. DistroBox. Once you have in DistroBox installed, you can run DistroBox on Gen two and then install applications from anywhere else. Or you can do what I do is I run OpenSUSE. I have a Gen two DistroBox and can then run what you know, I can compile anything that I want from Gen two by using OpenSUSE. <laughs> I, DistroBox may actually be probably Gen 2's best friend <laughs> for those who don't, who haven't gotten into it. Because I mean, like, if you want to get into Gen 2 and you'd like to use the system, but you're scared of having to compile your browser, all that BS, and you got a low power system, 
I mean, you'd all all you'd have to do is compile DistroBox. Yeah, I am going to say something negative about it though, in that regard, specifically when it comes to Gen, Gen two. One of the, th- the things that you use Gen two for is because of use flags, right? Compiling that stuff with use flags gives you that power, and that's what Gen two is for, is because it gives you that power and complete control over how things compile. If you were to go the distrobox route, which you can, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just you remove that advantage that distro that Gen two gives you, right? Now, as a beginner, like if you wanted to just if you need something really fast or you don't want to have to compile it like a browser all the time, browser would be fantastic. That's what I do with Vivaldi. It's just because Arch always gets the volley first, so I've installed the volley from the Arch re- the AUR, exported it to my OpenSUSE, and that's how I use it. Uh, why did you have to install it through the AUR? It has a Arch repository version. The AUR one is a little bit ahead. Well, yeah, I agree. But do you compile the wild wide vine for it as well? Everything, yeah. yeah. E- everything's uh, right from AUR. Yeah, I maintain the uh, the wide vine from the AUR for it. I just grab the one from Arch and the FFmpeg from Arch, but the wide vine I get from the AUR. But I'm going to say this about DistroBox. When you are on Arch where, where you have access to everything, there's no point. <laughs> real yeah, point that's, that's, that's about the only <laughs> there's distro. There's no real point for DistroBox. Yeah, yeah, I hey. totally agree. That's about the only distro that makes very little sense for, for my usage, right? I it, um, I have it I have it installed on my laptop downstairs in the shop. Uh, I just update it from time to time to see, and it allows me. No, it it's useful on Arch because it allows me to learn the different package managers on different distros. Well, see, the way I use DistroBox and the way you probably use it, Steve. I mean, you probably use it more in a developer way than I do. But on Arch, the purpose for using DistroBox wouldn't be our usage of installing applications because you can just yeah, do that exactly. from the AUR. Instead, it would be for testing other environments and developing for those environments and building in those devi- environments stuff like that. So there's an, an entirely different use case for DistroBox. And that's not just an arch, but for everybody. But if you're a developer, you're going to use it in a more broad sense than my little use case of just, wow, look at all these apps I have app, you know access to. Yeah. It's so good. No, it's, it's just it just allows me as a distro maintainer to learn the various, uh, the various package managers and how they talk to each other. Uh, how do they talk to the system? But the only disadvantage to uh, to DistroBox really is it uses your system's kernel, your every, your system's everything. So they don't use their own kernel to learn more about each. So uh, ha- uh, then you have to install each and every system as a virtual machine. So uh, yeah, but, well, I mean, uh, yeah, that would make. I, I think DistroBox's main selling point is not uh, that you can test the the actual system in its entirety like the core yeah. system it's more of it's and more we're of not the talking, environment and we're not talking desktop environment here we're just talking the core yeah. system yeah yeah um, but yeah. yeah but it's still fun for me to to learn the package managers because i had no idea that some <laughs> distros had an update command this long so <laughs> you're talking about you gen just 2 wanna... <laughs> 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 so I didn't know that there were there were update commands that you had to memorize and for old people and uh, that ain't that ain't a thing. <laughs> Alias that shit, people. Use aliases. <laughs> yeah. All right. But, so go ahead, um, Tyler. What were you gonna say? Oh, I, I, I was gonna say, are we moving on to my next thing? Because yeah, I, I got your, it. Your next one. All right. The next one that I couldn't live without is is Caden Live. I do want to go ahead and say DaVinci Resolve is hands down the better video editor. Um, I don't think it's a debate. If you want to argue with that one, you're probably delusional. Um, It is clearly a better video editor in almost every sense of the word. However, it is proprietary. And also the getting DaVinci Resolve to work first time you open it can be a nightmare. Um, Although sometimes it will just work, but it's very touch and go. Did, did you end up trying? I'm sorry. Did you end up trying DaVinci Box? I actually can't remember. I know I was going to. I don't know if I did, but I'm not using it. So if I did try it, I didn't have success with it. Uh, I can't remember if I did. Uh, probably not. Uh, it's just because I can't remember if I did. But I know I checked it out. And it looks like a really good project, by the way. If anyone doesn't know what DaVinci Box is, it's a really cool little 
distro box package or packaging of DaVinci Resolve so you can easily run it you know, anywhere in Linux. So, but anyway, with Caden Live, Caden Live is probably the best and most reliable video editor on Linux and Windows. It does not have extremely nice performance. It's like the performance is not terrible, but it is nowhere near as good as you're going to get on something like DaVinci Resolve or Premiere. That being said, if render times are not the be-all, end-all for you, it has got plenty of effects, uh, of effects for most people. The very few people are not are going to need transitions or effects that they'll have to do custom themselves outside of Kate and Life. It's got most of what you want there. It works. Um, I very rarely have issues with it. Um, I have had crashes with uh, Kate and Live, but... Uh, they're very rare. And the few times that I do have crashes, I open it back up and it recovers the project. And maybe I lose like a minute or two of work, maybe. So not really a problem there. But yeah, Caden Live, I think, is probably what most Linux users are going to use for a video editor anyway. And it's probably one of the nicest ones you're going to find. But yes, I do know that a lot, a lot of people, because someone mentioned in chat, Caden Live crashes on Ubuntu, but does not on Arch. Uh, that's one thing that Caden Live is known for and all video editors. I'm, I'm not going to lie. This is not something that's unique to Caden Live. This is true with all video editors. If you slightly change up your system or, you know, are using something that maybe the developers are not intending you to be using it on in the first place, it, it the likelihood that it's going to work well is not good. That's why DaVinci Resolve is so bad on Linux. Yes, they do make a Linux version, but their focus is almost entirely not on that at all. So it buggy. Their official yeah. distros are like Rocky and CentOS, and like nobody uses those as desktop. Exactly. No. Linux. This is weird. All right, uh, Steve, your first, your next one, please. My next one. My next one is simply console terminal on KDE. I spend so much time in console. It it has become if 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 something goes wrong with it, I I, I feel missing something like missing an arm or something because I use you know as well uh, in the office downstairs. I prefer console, <clears throat> but the terminal uh, console the terminal. I spend so much time because I'm a distro maintainer. I spent so much time building, compiling packages because if, in case you didn't know, I uh, currently maintain around 500 packages from the AUR that I have on my, uh, on my repositories. I have to com stay up to date. And most of them are Git packages. And Git packages are not easy to maintain because they, uh, the, whoever on the AUR put them there, they, they put the Git PKG build and they forget about it for years and years and years because it's self-updatable. You just run the make PKG uh, every now and again and you always get to the, the latest commit. This is the nature of Git package. So I have to maintain those. So I'm, I'm constantly in the terminal. And as I said at the beginning of the episode, uh, I sat hours and hours and days on uh, working on that script, that NVIDIA Wayland script. It's all bash and it's all terminal based. So I cannot live without the terminal anymore. I even update my packages, install packages, do everything via the terminal. I don't do anything via a GUI package manager. And that's why Zero Linux no longer ships a GUI package manager. We leave the choice up to the user, but we're slowly becoming like Endeavor, kind of. The, the, the whole thing is terminal. Terminal is such a magical tool. Once you start learning more and more commands, uh, I even do, uh, watch YouTube. I watch YouTube in terminal. But I do things in terminal, a lot of things in terminal. 99% of, of my day is spent in terminal, and I love it. It's, I never thought I'd say this ever, me coming from a lazy background. But hey, things change. I don't really care for console, but it's not as if it's bad. It's just I prefer Kitty. Uh, so my next one is going to be... Oh, uh, Vorta. I, I use Vorta all the time. So Vorta is a Borg backup front end. It works with Bo Borg base. I've used it as a thingy the week of the past, so I don't need to talk too much about it. But basically, if you use, if, if you're interested in backing up your stuff online, 
Borg and Borg base is probably the best way to do it. Borg base is astonishingly cheap for quite a lot of space. I mean, it's not like hundreds of terabytes or anything, but if you need to s store like a terabyte or, you know, a, what of stuff online, Borg and Borg base is the best way to do it. Vorda is the front end that is recommend usually recommended for Borg. And it just works really well. Now, you have to have some knowledge of SSH in order for this to work because you have to create a key and all that stuff. So it does take a little bit of know-how in order to use. But once you have it set up, it just starts up at, every time you turn your computer on, runs in the background. You can set a schedule. So I have mine set up. So every every morning at 3 a.m., it does a, a Delta backup of my computer of the, of the files that I have set up, and it uploads them to Borg base and I have a uh, a compressed backup of all of my stuff that would kill me to lose like you know the pictures and tax documents and some of the assets for the channel are all up there now if I wasn't worried about you know, bandwidth and and uh, data cap and stuff like that I'd actually back up all of my video files up there as well but that would costs a lot more money and not something I'm really interested in doing, but it is possible if you need to back up a lot of data, they have a lot of uh, options. Now, I know some people prefer rsync.net in order to do this, but that doesn't use Borg. That uses uh, rsync, obviously. Now, they do have a, a Borg a Borg equivalent or something that you can use with that, but I found that rsync is actually quite a bit more expensive, but they do offer higher plans. If you need to store a ton of data, I'm like talking like terabytes, rsync probably is a better option than Borg base, but uh, for me, Vorta is, is is freaking awesome, and it's just something that I have on all my computers now. All right, uh, Tyler, your next one. Uh, my next one is something that obviously I couldn't live without, and I don't think most of us would be able to live out uh, live without if you're creating content or doing anything like that. OBS Studio. It's probably the only broadcasting software you should use unless you're a literal Chad and you want to use FFmpeg because you're too good for graphical programs at all. You can do that. But as someone who has streamed and recorded <laughs> videos and stuff with FFmpeg before, have oh. fun. Oh man. Uh, those, those days of you using BSD was, were just fantastic for lip sync, li lip syncing. It was great. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yep. It, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so enjoy using just FFmpeg. Uh, it's not easy, but OBS makes the whole process of streaming and setting up stuff and saving uh, your, your different scenes and configurations very easy. Uh, I, I don't think I could get by without OBS. And quite frankly, I think it is kind of insane that we do have OBS on Linux. It's one of those gifts that you don't really, like you don't really notice until it would be gone. Like if OBS was to mm -hmm. disappear, you'd really notice it being gone. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, like, I mean, that, I think that's one of the biggest applications that as Linux users, and especially if, even if you don't make content, if you enjoy watching Linux content, we take it for granted a lot. Like, how good it is and how much, I mean, if OBS didn't exist, a lot of the Linux content that has gotten people interested in it or taught them about Linux probably wouldn't exist. Again, as people who have used FFmpeg for recordings and streamings will know, it makes the level or the bar of entry to doing that type of stuff much higher. So yeah, it's very nice. And, and also, I mean, this is totally separate, but I don't think anyone really wants to use the simple screen recorder type programs for some, they work just fine, but also like, uh, <laughs> yeah, they're, they're not the best. I'll say one thing about, uh, I'll say one thing about the simple screen recorder. Some person DM'd me for whatever reason. He was like, I cannot, I cannot use Linux without simple screen recorder. Uh, it's no longer on the Arch repositories. Can you put it on yours? I was like, if it's not meant to be there, that means it's deprecated. And I went and checked on the website. No, they're still maintaining it. Just Arch decided to remove it because it's something not to be used because it's too simple and it's and it, it's not very compatible. It's not compatible with Wayland. Some people made it work on Wayland uh, somehow, but uh, in a hacky way. But it doesn't work with Pipewire very well because it's a pulse audio thing yep so i was like i'll put it there but 
you figure out how to use it if you encounter any issues. And it, apparently the guy removed Pipewire from Zero Linux and replaced it with false audio. I don't know how he did that. But anyway, uh, he wanted it. So it's on my repositories, but it didn't receive an update in nine months. So I'm cool having it. It's never going to receive an update. So it's, it's a package there. Yeah, I used uh, uh, Simple Screen Recorder. It's not a fun time. Yeah, for uh, whatever reason, sometimes it records your voice in a chimp punk voice. Sometimes it records at uh, a thousand yeah. times speed. And <laughs> the, the, the thing with Simple Screen Recorder is that it's really good at doing what it says on the box. It will record your screen very, very well. It's when you try to make it record your voice or try to add in a camera or something like that. Yeah. Try and make it do things that it's not wasn't meant or built to do, really. Then it starts getting wonky. If it just if you just need to record your screen for many years it was the best option. But now Gnome has yes. their own recorder. I'm sure KDE does. I mean, KDE, KDE is ha- working on one, yeah. Uh, they're working. Uh, it's Spectacle, basically. Spectacle will have a screen. Recorder. Oh, and that's because what, that's exactly what Spectacle needs is to be more complicated. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm going to piss off the KDE guys every single time. I swear to God. All right. Uh, let's see here. Um, that who who was what? That was yours, Tyler. Yeah. Yes. So, Steve, you're next. Go ahead. My next one is something that, I, of course, you will agree with me, Matt. Kate. Yeah, yeah. Kate's good. It's awesome. I don't think you need Especially, to say anything more. It's just an excellent text editor. Just add, just include the plugins, and uh, you're good to go. If you if you maintain PKG builds and you write your own Bash script, Kate Kate is magic. Kate has everything that one requires. You don't need to use VS Podium or VS Code or any of that. Kate does it all. Tyler's trolling you in the chat already. <laughs> also, I'm, su- I'm surprised. Oh. It would have been funnier if you said Emacs. It would have been funnier. Oh, God. <laughs> you, like, you missed it, man. You missed it. <laughs> it would have been You funny. missed your chance. Uh, uh, yeah, Kate's awesome. Uh, my only qu- my only problem with Kate is that you really, if you're using KDE, it's fantastic. Like It just fits right in. If you're using yeah. anything else and you don't have the ability to theme it, it looks bad. I use uh, uh, the alternative for GTK-based desktop environments. I use Genie. Oh, yeah, yeah. Genie. Uh, so uh, I use that on GTK, on XFCE, basically, and Gnome, the mm-hmm. other two versions of Zero Linux. But uh, it's not as good as Kate. Nothing comes uh, close. But they, uh, because you're right, Matt, Kate does not fit on anything else uh, but KDE. Yeah, it just doesn't Visual. look good. Now, if you're like using a window <coughs> manager... <coughs> you're right there, Tyler. Yeah, sorry, just had something <laughs> in my throat. <laughs> yeah, <damn. laughs> uh, if you are in like a window manager or something, you can use Qt five CT and uh, Cavantum to theme it. It works fine, but you got to do a little bit of of work to get it to work. So, uh, anyways, that's K. Uh, so uh, my next one, and I'm I actually chose to do this one third because I thought Steve would actually use it. But I, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna go proprietary on this one, guys. I'm gonna get a lot of. St- you know, flack in the chat, uh, but I'm going to go with Vivaldi. Uh, Vivaldi is my browser of choice, has been now for several months, and it still remains really, really good. I would say this. If you are someone who only has one or two tabs open, you can use whatever browser you want. It doesn't matter. You're not a browser user. <laughs> if you're someone who like who's like me, who hoards tabs, like, not, like right now I have 200 tabs open, and they're all neatly organized into workspaces and tab stacks. So, for example, I have an ideas workspace. In there, I have a apps tab stack, a distros tab stack. These are all my video ideas, right? I just leave them there in tabs. It just works for my workflow. I know it doesn't make sense to a lot of people, uses a lot of resources. I understand that it's not the best way of doing things. I don't care. It's just the way that works for me. <laughs> One tap per browser. <laughs> so wait, I know this is your thingy of the week, but I'm am I allowed to change my thingy of the week in, into just, uh, you know, a PSA about about your thingy of the week. I mean, you can talk about it, but it's not a thing. We're not to the thingies. We're still talking about the apps. Well, man. I know you're, but you, this is one of the apps that you're saying he's, you know, your, you, you your can, essential app. What are you going to say about it, Tyler? You're going you to bad mouth it? Yes, of course. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. I'll listen to you. Go ahead. Valdi is not a browser. 
Vivaldi is an office suite <laughs> intended to be ran inside of a browser I've front made end. The, I've made the same argument. You got two guys against you, uh, Tyler. <laughs> but you don't have to enable the features you don't want. So like the email and the RSS feeds and all that stuff, it asks you right upon the first launch if you want those things enabled. If you don't, they're not there. You don't, you so, don't have to want Okay, so I'm so j just so we're clear about this, you are given the option to go through and disable the file browser, email client, uh, the window manager, the taskbar, the update notification manager, the uh, the nuke that it gives you, not intended for real use. Uh, and then <laughs> it do it doesn't have ninety percent of the things you just said. Okay, it has an email client, it has an RSS feed reader, but you want to know what also has those things. Firefox has those things as well. You just have to have the extensions enabled in order to use them. So don't get, but get, off your, it, get off your high horse there, Tyler. Look, it's not a high horse. It's just there is no... Uh, like Here's the thing that kills me. I respect that you and a lot of other people love Vivaldi and that it functions as a good browser for you. I totally respect that. The only thing, though, is, is there is no other browser that upsets me the way Vivaldi does. <laughs> like the way that you get upset about Nuggies is the way that I get upset. <laughs> oh, in that case, Vivaldi. I'm going to be talking about it a lot because you know, this is payback's a bitch. Uh, uh, Darth Vader in the comments says, why, why are you always complaining about Emacs being bloated? I, I don't complain about Emacs being bloated. I just complain that I don't want to use Emacs. But the difference... <laughs> that is true. So here's the thing. Vivaldi is the Emacs of browsers and I like that. But I think if I would, I would like... Emacs, if it did the things that I wanted it to do without the extra stuff that I didn't want it to do or had easy ways of like turning things off, you know, and I didn't have to ma oh. manage it via config file or whatever. Honestly, guys, the reason why I like Vivaldi isn't because it has an email client or because it has an RSS feed reader or it has, you know, a, a UI that's customizable within the GUI. I don't, those things are all whatever I, I could do without them. Because I can I can customize Firefox with with user Chrome. I, I can uh, I can add whatever features to Firefox basically that I want, except for two. That's workspaces and tab stacks. Now, Firefox has a plugin, Simple Tabs Groups, that mimics the workspaces functionality, but you can't get tab stacks to go along with it. Once you've used tab stacks along with workspaces and you're a tab hoarder, you'll never go back. Like, like seriously, it's so good, especially if you're if you're organized. It's it's very good. Can I say one thing? Go ahead. How the tables have turned. My, uh, I lost my voice telling people that Vivaldi is great, and those same people that y yelled at me and telling me you shithead, you you're using proprietary software. Don't you know that you we don't like people in the FOSS world using proprietary software, and those same people are now using Vivaldi. Well, I mean. Look, you guys talking about Vivaldi and all this stuff, I get it. It's a great browser. But as someone has already pointed out in chat, if you want a good browser, Microsoft Edge is the way to go. Matt used to be, you know, in the know, I'm sorry, and pump, you know, Microsoft Edge. Now he's gone to the dark side. He's doing Vivaldi. As we all know, if you want a good browser, you go with Microsoft Edge. Also, how are you going to live without the beautiful telemetry features it includes? I'm sh I'm sh <laughs> I know that Vivaldi's proprietary and probably has telemetry, but you want to know what? I don't care. Tab stack's too good. All right. Anyways, Tyler, your next one, please. Uh, <clears throat> my next one, in all seriousness, is actually my browser because I planned on doing that. But mine is uh, Firefox and and. Well, no, Firefox and Thorium or Brave. Um, those those three I kind of rotate between, but I like having Firefox as like my main one. Wait, go ahead. Yeah. Oh, oh. No. <laughs> I thought you were raising your hand to ask a question. Uh, no, no, <laughs> I'm just putting pitchforks up. Pitchforks. <laughs> so I want to come at you with pitchforks. <laughs> looks more like a rake. I have a question for you, Tyler. Why have you tried Mercury? Uh, <clears throat> I had someone message me about it, but I have not checked it out yet. No. It's literally just the Thorium version of Firefox. It's by the same dev. Yeah, yeah the main dev. reason I haven't tried it uh, yet is just because, to be honest, uh, I'm already trying to get used to deciding between whether or not I want to, I want to use Thorium or Brave more. 
I'm not super big on Brave, just like not, they do a lot of things as a company and as a product that I do like. The The only problem with that being, I don't, I don't really like a lot of their, their marketing tactics or the like whole scheme with crypto and like trying to monetize the web in a different way, but still using the same ads that you would like, it just, it doesn't, a lot of their stuff I don't completely get and agree with, but you know, all of the privacy stuff obviously is really nice, but to be honest, when it comes to Firefox, I enjoy using Firefox as my default primary browser uh, for one, because that helps out with uh, Firefox, like market share numbers, not completely dropping to nothing. And I do want to support Mozilla because I kind of, even though I, me and Matt have talked about at length doing this podcast, our problems with Mozilla, I'm sure Steve has shared some of his as well, but uh, Mozilla, I do believe can turn it around and change, uh, at like, I know people think people can't change and companies or organizations or groups of people, I think they can. And so hopefully Mozilla can get their shit together and actually just focus on making a good browser. Um, so I, I do still want to support them and what they do, but also one thing about Firefox that makes it really difficult to stick with and use all the time is if you want to, I don't know, make a website and do your own CSS, things can render completely differently inside of Firefox than they would Chrome or, you know, a Chrome based browser against the microphone. Sorry. Oh, oh, I just now saw the super chat. Yes, I totally understand. Uh, I, I will uh, edit that part out as much as I just watched it on the video. <laughs> That's the best part ever. I do, I, I, I do like his idea. I think I think me and Nate might start working on that. I, uh, I know, buddy. Uh, you, you watched me do that on video. I, that's the funniest thing I've ever seen. Nuggium. Nuggium. Yes, no, I love no, it. No, I love no. it. <laughs> oh God, I hate you, people, with all of my heart. <laughs> if someone wants to work with me on bringing this to a reality, please, for the love of God, hit Literally, me up on my you discourse. Could just fork Firefox and change the name. Why did I give him the idea? Why did I give him the idea? Why did I? Well, I mean, it'd have to be Chrome if we're going to name it Nugium. Oh, well, we could do multiple versions. Why not? Why not? <laughs> Have Fine. a Firefox version, fork, Chromium version, or Chromium. It's the same thing. Whatever. It's gonna be the most garbage browser ever. It's got to have an email client, though, bro. It's got to have an email client. I am. I am not. <laughs> I'm not gonna do the Vivaldi <laughs> shit. No. Well, no. Well, I, I, just think each email could be called a called a nuggy. <laughs> and you can have a little the sound, nuggy? a little sound that goes off every time that says, "You've got nuggies." <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit! I love it. Uh, Matt, what are you Holy doing? You're 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 shaping your enemy. <laughs> you gotta get some giving them ideas, man. <laughs> Stop that! Oh, that's so good. All right, Steve, your next one, please. My next one is uh, very, very, very simple. It's uh, it's it's an app made by the Mint guys. It's called what did I say? It was called. I forgot. I was so old. Uh, hyper uh, 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 hyperonics something he doesn't uh, even know <laughs> I do know <laughs> I built the I built the thing just one second just one second it's hypnotics hypnotics not hypnotic it, yeah yeah it's hypnotics it's it has a Wayland uh, version and an X11 version they maintain two separate packages but basically you can stream hundreds and thousands maybe maybe thousands I don't know I didn't count them. Uh, TV uh, live American TV stations. I like to watch MCN uh, classical movies. MCM, it's called. Yeah, yeah, yeah. C- classical movies. Uh, we don't get those over here. We have to pay a lot of money for those. Uh, but I can stream them, and there's the ability to record them now. But yeah, it's it's an awesome app. It keeps me it keeps me mellow while I'm working on Zero Linux. But yeah, it's a, it's an awesome app. It's very simple. It's called Hypnotics. It's got a Wayland uh, version and an X11 version. So cool. enjoy. All right. So I think instead of going around one more time, what we'll do instead 
is go ahead and jump into the thingies of the week. So we'll get more apps in anyways. <laughs> but uh, we'll go ahead and keep the last section and you just whatever. All right. So uh, every week we do our final section, which is called thingies of the week. Now, obviously, you've gotten a lot of app picks from us today, but we're going to do some more. Uh, we could have called these things anyway, any, anything, but our mind is always in the gutter. So we call them thingies of the week. Uh, definitely not for the reason why you think that they're called that. So uh, we're going to go ahead and jump in. Tyler, your thingy of the week. Mine is BTOP. Uh, if you're used to using HTOP and you're like, I wish HTOP looked better than BTOP. Or had more options. Or had yeah. more option, Or, or actually themes. killed out. No, no. And actually killed applications when I wanted to kill applications. For some yeah. reason, it doesn't work anymore very reliably. Well, BTOP is probably, it, it is one of the better looking HTOP alternatives. Um, there are a few others that look very similar to it. And a lot of people use things like bash top, whatever. I've switched over to using BTOP because it is remarkably quick fast. Yeah. Like it's just, it's really fast. And I, I, I wouldn't say that there's a night and different a night and day difference between it and something like bash top, but th there is a, it's by the same developers. So yeah. this one is in, in C plus plus instead of, uh, the yeah. Java one or whatever. Well, I think bash one. I think the Bash the one, one is bash. written in Bash. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you you got your choice in in C or Bash. And to be honest, I think the C version is probably just by nature of it being C a little bit faster. But the Bash one is. It's not like it's noticeably slow or anything. But um, I really like yeah. using BTOP. It look. I mean, the, and Bash top is you, no longer being maintained. I I'm not sure. I, I don't want to I say. haven't seen any commits for a while. He just didn't yeah. archive the the thing, but he didn't push any commits for a long time. Uh, but there's also like I mean someone's already mentioned Y top. There there is a lot of other, you know, H top alternatives out there, but B top is is really Big Pod did say, isn't it fairly CPU intensive? Uh and ki kind of not. Mm -mm. Not not really. It's it's not really CPU. Uh, how about this? I'll put it, it like this. It uses three point. I, I measured it. It uses three point eight to four point three percent of the CPU. Well, that'll ch but but that will also change on your CPU as well. Yeah. So yeah. It, it 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 depends, but it is just as CPU intensive as any other good looking H top alternative is going to be. And also, let's be clear, H top also is like it is a little bit cpu intensive just by nature of showing you your resource usage mm -hmm. like that takes resources to do so but yeah. it's not any more or at least from what i can tell it's not any more cpu intensive than something like bash top or any of the other ones that i've tested are because i haven't really found one that's noticeably slower like or more intensive than the others uh they're all right about the same thing they're right in the margin of error so if you're looking and and if people are looking for a gui based one not a terminal based one there's one called resources it's on Flathub, and it allows you to search for services that you want to kill and kill so is the it whole, QT whole or, purpose uh no, QT it's, or GTK. GTK. Uh, GTK. it's gtk real chat use top i'm sorry I'm just, just <laughs> real top. All right, Steve, your thingy of the week, please quickly. My thingy of the week is quite simple. It's called WayDroid. I mentioned it earlier. It allows you to run Android full fledged uh, uh, lineage OS. And if you wanna you wanna root it, you can root it in, with Magisk and do whatever you want. But what's the point? I use it a lot in the office downstairs in the shop because if I want to watch YouTube, I want to watch it ad free. Uh, possible. Uh, that's not the only point I use it for. Uh, there's a lot of Android-only applications that support tablet mode, so I use them on my tiny little 13-inch monitor on my laptop, so it's as if it's a tablet. It's uh, it's Wayland-only, unfortunately. Uh, there is no alternative for X, so if you're using X11 or Xorg, there is no good Android emulator out there. Uh, not that I could find. I searched and I searched high and low. The only ones I could find were ter uh, were Android shells, basically. They, they, they were not the full Android experience. And what's what I love about WayDroid is any Android app you install, you can access from your Linux app menu. They have an entry in the app menu. You can, uh, if you installed, for example, Firefox on WayDroid, 
you can access it from your Linux without having to launch the whole uh, GUI of Waydroid. So, but the only downside of it is it's stuck on Android 11. <laughs> I haven't seen any newer versions. And today I ran an upgrade. There's a command called sudo waydroid upgrade. It upgraded an 800 megabyte image, but it was still Lineage OS 18.1 based on Android 11. It wasn't based on a newer version of Android, but that's coming. I saw it on the on the on the GitHub. But it's a good alternative if you want to play your favorite Android games on your little laptop or something. It's a wonderful little emulator, and it works. Great. I even wrote a guide on how to install it the easy way. And there's a tweak for it on the AUR called uh, Waydroid Settings. It allows you to up the DPI, uh, change the font sizes, and you can patch the application to, to open in windowed mode. So you can have multiple applications open at the same time and use it like a multitasking. Uh, it's really, really, really good. So uh, Waydroid, so good. If you want to enjoy, uh, if you want to try, uh, if you want to use Android stuff on your Linux machine. Cool. All right. So mine is going to be learn.dvorak.nl. So if you are crazy like me and have decided to switch away from QWERTY or Xerty or whatever you use now and switch to Dvorak, uh, there are obviously many different typing tests out there that you can use. You can use monkey type to do it, or there's a, there's a couple other ones that are really good and open source. Uh, the one that somebody pointed me towards was specifically for Dvorak. So it's learn.dvorak.nl. It basically allows you to choose which le uh, level of the keyboard you want to you, know, you train yourself on. So if you want to stick on the home row, you can do that. You can choose the whole keyboard if you want to start there. And it's just a typing test. It looks exactly like you'd expect a typing test to work. But it's specifically meant for people who are using Dvorak. And it's pretty good. It you know works really well in the browser. Just you know allows you to learn your where your keys are because the keys are all over the place and, and it just on the topic of me switching to Dvorak I, I'm 24 hours in right now and I'm up to 18 words per minute which is I normally type 120 so it feels fucking slow AF <laughs> it's really really slow and it feels painful uh, but I started off at 10 words per minute, so I'm already almost doubled just in a day. Now, I don't expect to keep doubling. <laughs> uh, for, for, for the ignorant people uh, like me, what the heck is Dvorak? It's a keyboard layout that is meant to put all of the keys that you use the most in English on the home row. So A O E U I D H T N S. That's the whole, entire home row. Uh, and those are the most used letters in the English language. Uh, and then they put the, it, to be honest with you, if you're going to change to a different keyboard layout, a lot of people are going to recommend Colmac, and I would too, if only because in Colmac, your uh, Z, V, and X keys don't move. So when you do copy and paste, all that stuff is in the exact same spot it is with QWERTY. With Dvorak, they move, and not only do they move, they move to the entire other side of the freaking keyboard, and it's it's really freaking annoying me. I may end up going to Colmac instead, uh, but I wasn't as fast with Colmac as I am with Dvorak. I've tried Dvorak a couple times. I know I can speed oh. up on this quite fast, um, but the keyboard shortcuts for copy and paste are going to be the absolute hardest thing for me to do because they're on completely different and they're not close to each other they're spread out um so, so uh, i'm having i'm having a hard time typing in french from english and you want to go dvorak <laughs> yeah oh my brain hurts already listening to you. <laughs> <laughs> all right so that's it for this episode of the linux cast we talk about linux usually for about an hour and 20 minutes every single week this week we went a little bit over but that's usually what we do also but uh, we record this live every Saturday at 3 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time or thereabouts. Today we're a little bit late, but, you know, we get there. Uh, so you can watch us live at uh, YouTube.com slash LinuxCast. Make sure you hit the subscribe button, the notification bell, all this stuff, so you don't miss a live stream or any of the videos that I do post. I'll be posting more videos this next week. This was kind of my, my vacation week, so uh, that's beside the point. So before we jump into the end of the show, I have to get all of our contact information. If you want to contact me or the podcast or any of that stuff, the best way to do so is via email, email at linuxcast.org. You can also head on over to the website, thelinuxcast.org. There you'll find blog posts and previous episodes all the way back to season one. 
Uh, although I haven't been updating that as well as I should. I'm still working on an alternative. It'll get there. Uh, you can also find Tyler, who actually knows how to use YouTube again. Um, YouTube.com slash ZanyOG. Head on over there. Give him a subscribe. Also, he has a brand new channel. He doesn't have a URL for it. I'm not saying the name. He'll go, he'll put the link in the chat right now, and then I'll find it and put it in the show notes eventually. Um, I'm not saying the name. I've had enough of the, that name. Okay? Just no more. Oh, God. Dang you, Nate. <laughs> Anyways, uh, if you watch us live, you'll find the chat, and the chat is usually the best part of the podcast. Uh, anyways, Steve is also online. He's at fossadon.org slash at zero Linux with a zero with an X, not a Z. And uh, there you'll find all of his stuff as well. If you want to find all of our contact information, including Josh's stuff when he he's around you find all that stuff at linuxcast.org slash contact you can support me on patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast if you want also interested in supporting the channel but you'd like actual things in return i have a store that's available at shop.linuxcast.org there you'll find uh desk mats and t-shirts and hats and all this stuff head on over there a lot of that stuff is, is fantastic it's really really good um i, I have the desk mat i'm not going to pull it out right now because it has my keyboard on it but it is really really good so i highly recommend that uh thanks to everybody who does so yeah thanks to everybody who does support me on patreon and youtube you guys are all absolutely amazing without you the challenge would not be anywhere near where it is right now so thank you so very much for your support i truly do appreciate it again thanks everybody for watching live if you did if not the audio version and the video version will be out later or tomorrow and I, again thanks for listening thanks for watching we'll see you next time it's Ooh. absolutely wonderful <laughs> It took him a really long time to come up for that, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We tend to get slower with time. <laughs>